Well, it's that time of year where we need to cut the grass. And my lawnmower doesn't work properly. There's something stuck around the blade. So let's get this sorted out. Right, well I've had this lawnmower probably about 15 years I suppose and I've really done nothing to it and uh, at the end of last season it got some something stuck around the uh, blade or whatever and I just parked it up here, left it outside and basically it's now time to cut the grass so I've got to get this sorted. Now I've really done nothing to this one, although we've done many many lawnmowers as you know, I think I may have changed the uh, diaphragm once in this and um, other than that it's just sat outside so it's really been uh, a good workhorse over the last 15 years and I think I might have changed the oil once in it in that time. Not ideal I know but that's what's happened just to show you how reliable these old Briggs and Stratton lawnmowers are. So let's just have a little look around it first of all, see the status and I'm not going to refurbish this one, we need it to cut the grass now so I've just got to get it working. Well as you can see after 15 years it started to develop a little hole there and as you can see I've never had this apart as I say but it's got some garden growing <laughs> in the back of it there look. And that's why a lot of these rot out, because these are never really cleaned out. Looking at the state of the spark plug there, that's all rusty. That could probably do with a new spark plug. Bottom line is it could probably do with a good service, this lawnmower anyway. So um, we'll see how it starts up. I'll, I will check the oil in it, just to have a, a little look and see what sort of condition it's in. Oh, right, there we go. Have we got any oil in it? Yeah, it's about halfway up the dipstick, and it is quite black. So I may, uh, I may change the oil yet. Because don't forget, this is our own personal one. A lot of people, when they want to check underneath, they might lift it sort of that way. If you do that, you're going to be sort of pushing stuff, oil into the carburetor. Uh, if you're going to do anything, lift it up away from the carburetor, which is this way. Or ideally, tip it back this way. That's the best way to do it, because all the oil then goes to the bottom of the engine. And then you shouldn't have any problem at all there. So let me try and weigh this down. And there you go. I don't know whether you can see or not there. We've got some stuff wrapped her right around the boss there which is obviously slowing it down there's lots of old uh, grass here as you can probably see which I'm gonna have to pull out look at that look I'm gonna dig all this out and I'm gonna start picking all this off here because it's actually tight around the actual boss there and that's why it's the motor run is very very slow and it comes to a standstill this is all old string and stuff like that and you've got to get all that off so I'm gonna have to cut that off so all I'm gonna do basically is just take a blade and hopefully cut through this it's a uh, just a matter of getting all these old bits of clothing and stuff. Maybe old socks and stuff like that, because when we cut over by the, um, the washing line, sometimes we pick the old sock up. And uh, that's what tightens up around this. Right, okay then, so I've scraped everything out of there now, and I've got the uh, all the cable that was tied around the, the rotor. And that's it all there, that was stopping it from, or making it go really, really slow. One thing I forgot to mention earlier on, don't forget if you're tipping your lawnmower up in any way whatsoever, even if it's not running, always make sure that you remove the spark plug cap because you could turn that over by hand and you're still generating a spark and there could be enough fuel in the carburetor and that could suddenly wet round once or twice and have your hand off. So always make sure that you've got that actually removed before you actually do anything underneath your lawnmower whatsoever. So as you can see there now, there's the shaft nice and clean. And as I say, it's had a bit of a clean out here now, so we've got all this old rubbish here now. And while I'm here, I thought I might as well take the blade off and just have a look, quick look at the edge of that blade there. As you can see, there's no real edge on it at all whatsoever. This is the cutting part of the blade. And it, when you take it off, note what, which way it comes off. And also the, the chamfer, when you sharpen the blade, the chamfer faces upwards. So I'll, I'll show you that in a minute, but as I say, I'm going to sharpen this blade now just to get a, a nice edge on it. And also what makes life a whole lot easier is if you've got one of these things, which is an impact driver. So, <coughs> the head off. <coughs> there we go. Now you could really struggle with that if you're using a spanner, but that's where you can buy a little impact gun and a little compressor, a little mini compressor that does so many different things. Blowing duff, blowing down, undoing tight bolts like that where you really need an impact driver. And yeah, they're only cheap. So if you've got a little workshop, Get yourself a little compressor and a little airline as well. Right, so let's remove that blade. And as you can probably see, that blade is well and truly dull there, look. So 
I'm gonna have a little go at sharpening that. I won't show you how I do that anyway, because uh, not for one for this video. Right, okay then, so we've got a nice little edge on our blade now, as you can probably see there. Nice shiny edge, turned it over, there we go. There we go, that's the cutting edge. So that goes this way up. And normally what you've got on here, you see these two holes here on the actual blade, you should have two little pegs on the boss there, and they normally sit over there. And they're designed to break these little aluminium pegs on the boss, so that if you hit something hard, it doesn't jar the motor, it will spin that. And when I took this off, these were sort of off-center, so I'd seen that we've actually hit something in the past as well. Now, technically speaking, you should get a new boss for that. That involves getting a flywheel puller, pulling this one off, and then buying a new boss. These can be quite dear. Another way to do it is to actually drill out these holes as well, where the old pins used to be, and you could actually get some soft screws, like brass screws, to actually go in there and nut and bolt them as well. That's probably not the specific job you should do, but that just gives you a little bit of confidence that uh, your blade is gonna be in a fixed position, and if it does go again, them soft brass screws, like a little M4 screw, something like that, and they will break as well. So uh, that's just something, if you, if, you, if you haven't got the time or you haven't got the boss to change, if you haven't got a spare boss. So for the moment, I'm just gonna put this straight back on and um, we're gonna take it from there. So again, I'm just gonna locate me blade onto the boss start screwing this in by hand and as soon as I've got the air gun here I might as well just sip it up with the air gun there we go right okay then so let's lay that back down again get all that rubbish out of the way Clear that up in a minute. Sweep that into a little box or something. There we go. So I'm quite happy now that underneath we've uh, basically done as much as we can underneath uh, with regards to the blade and clearing all the rubbish. So again, bring the lawnmower back down to its normal position. And I suppose I could really treat it to a new spark plug. It's not had one in uh, 15 years. So yeah, I'm gonna put a new spark plug in. So much for me putting a new spark plug in. I haven't done lawnmowers for quite a while now, and uh, I've actually run out of spare spark plugs, so I can't actually put a new one in. So let's get this old one out for now, and just have a little quick look inside, and see the condition of it. And so I've never had this out, I don't think. I know I've put a new diaphragm and gasket in once. And yeah, I can see there that the colour's very nice, it's sort of a charcoal grey there. If you can probably see that the gap looks okay as well so i'm actually going to put that straight back in as i say i've never had any problems at all with this apart from once when it started uh, hunting up and down and that means uh, nine times out of ten it's probably a fuel problem and nine times out of ten it's the gasket and diaphragm so let's put that back in right now again this hasn't had any new petrol in it i don't know what's in it actually let's have a look Normally it's advisable to, there is petrol in it, not a lot, but. Hmm, I don't know. I'll give it a go, see if it will start anyway. So let's get it on the floor for the moment. I know it's got oil in it. I know it could probably do with an oil change, but let's get it on the floor. Come out of the way, boys. I should actually get one of those what you call a motorcycle lift, that would be ideal for doing stuff like this, rather than lifting it up and down all the time. Right, hold on, let's get you out of here. Good. Right, so will it still be reliable? <laughs> let's give it a few pushes on the older. Uh... Right, there's a bit of petrol in there, so handle up. Ah. Try again. Could be dodgy petrol or old petrol. Right, let's put some petrol in it. 
Now normally you drain the old stuff out, but I just think I've got a little drop here. And if this doesn't start, I can see a little bit of rubbish in that fuel tank there anyway, so should really uh, take the tank off and give it a flush out, but I'll just put a little drop in anyway, in case it's just below the level. There we go, just put a little drop in. I say this is my old reliable one. Should start. All right, let's try that. How about that? Superb. And that nine times out of ten is the problem. If your lawnmower won't start, it's dodgy fuel. So a lot of today's fuels have got sort of additives in them and, uh, and these additives can sort of uh, degrade the petrol. So just give it a drop of fresh fuel. Even when you finish your annual cut at the end of the year, for example, drain the petrol tank out so that it's bone dry and then start each new year and uh, you should find that you shouldn't have any problems with your lawnmower starting. But you could see the problem that I had there with that old stale petrol and a little top of good stuff and woof, off she went straight away. So there you go, a little lesson learnt there. So there you go, that's our old little lawnmower there. I know it's not a very exciting video and it's not really a how-to. It's just something I needed to do on a Sunday afternoon and the grass is now at the time where it needs to be cut and that meant I had to get my finger out and start getting on my lawnmowers and uh, stop everything else. So a little job like that, a little 15 minute job or something like that can solve a problem. So now I've got to cut the grass now, it's going to take me another half hour. Anyway, see you a bit later. Bye for now.